Mule deer, also called Otoquilius henianus, are a species that are often overlooked because there seems to be such an abundance of them, especially here in Colorado. Once I started taking a closer look at the mule deer, I began to realize what a magnificent animal they truly are. I believe there is a lot to be learned from the mule deer. The systematics of the mule deer include kingdom name Animalia, phylum name Chordata, class Mammalia, order Pseudodactyla, family Cervidae, genus Otocoileus, and species Chemionus. Their original range and present range goes throughout North America from Alaska and Western Canada through the Rocky Mountains and Western Plain of the United States down to the northwestern part of Mexico. They have also been introduced in Argentina. There was a case study then comparing female mule deer to female elk to examine spatial distributions and resource partitioning. The object was to understand the differences in distributions and habitat selection by the two species of large herbivores. They found that the mule deers were declining because by trying to avoid the elk, they ended up not getting the land that they normally would use. The mule deer like to live in open grasslands, agricultural land, shrublands, woodlands, mountain forests, semi-deserts, and high mountain ecosystems. They are herbivores, so they eat a great diversity of living, wilted, dry, or decaying vegetation, such as leaves, needles, succulent stems, fruits, nuts, shrubs, domestic crops, and grasses. Before the winter comes, they eat very large amounts of food because during a normal winter, they will lose up to 20% of their total body weight. The mule deer also needs to drink about half a gallon of water for every 100 pounds per day. There are no statistics for the total population of mule deer at this time. We do know that there are approximately 40 species with the same genus name Otocoileus. The mule deer life expectancy rates are between 7 and 10 years, and surprisingly they are said to live longer in captivity. They reach sexual maturity at 1 to 2 years of age. Gestation lasts on average around 200 days, give or take 30 days. During May and July are when the fawns are usually born, and there is usually one to two born at a time. The weight of a buck is between 150 and 200 pounds, and some get to be as large as 300 pounds. The does are between 100 and 150 pounds, and the fawns at birth are between 6 and 8 pounds. Mule deer have good binocular vision, acute sense of hearing and smell, and are sensitive to movement. Their predators are mountain lions, wolves, coyotes, black bears, grizzly bears, lynx, and bobcats. The mule deer are very good at maneuvering their way out of being attacked, although that is not always the case. I resonate with the mule deer because simplicity and strength are two things I strive for in my own life, and they show great strength and simplicity in the way they live their lives and how long they have survived. On Science Daily, I read a scientific story on mule deer that was a study done in Canada. They played recorded distress calls of fawns, similar to the responses elicited when coyotes attacked the fawns. The mule deer mothers responded to both whitetail and mule deer fawns' calls, even when their own fawn was standing right next to them. The females, who are not even mothers, ran to help the fawns call recording. That would not happen if they only cared about their own selves and offspring. This is a great example of altruism among mule deer. Along with the great diversity that mule deer bring us, they also benefit us economically by the hundreds of millions of dollars that are spent towards license fees, meat, hunter expenditures for equipment, food, and transportation. The conservation status of mule deer is termed at least concerned because it has great adaptability to a wide range of habitats, large populations, occurrence in numerous protected areas, and somewhat stable populations but they are gradually decreasing. This is not something to take for granted. We need to make sure we do what we can so that they never reach the endangerment that other species have. We need to think ahead instead of waiting for it to happen. On average, there are 7,000 deer collisions reported every year in, in just Colorado, which costs us $3 million in vehicle damage costs. To me, this implies that in some way we are not working together to coexist. We need to realize what an important part the mule deer and humans play in each other's lives.
you call as he walks out.